your boy and Miguel. <laughs> your boy. <laughs> We're Never right. say that again. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound nice out of your mouth. I tried, I tried. I went off the first year, but I'm not sure, first of all, the height of your brothers mm. and where your sister lives. Those <laughs> are things on record, I don't know. Welcome back to Critical Banter. This is the podcast where we take the very best bits from your favorite late night shows and package them into one single podcast on this week's episode. New game, we'll be playing the TikTok game, What's It To Ya? And then we'll also be bringing back the podcast favorite segment, Cock Be Cucked. But before that throughout the week, we got me and Miguel, we have Senny. Hello. We have Rowie. G'day, g'day. And in lieu of Kushagra, we have a poster of Cristiano Ronaldo. However, the mic is you know up to him. So if he wants to chat away, he can. Hopefully Kush can like in the post, put some like talking, like a mouth and then I don't know, a he just, he, or something. <laughs> oh, sorry, Ronaldo jumps yeah, in. Yeah, Ronaldo, not Kush, yeah, not Kush. Kush. No, 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 no one's <laughs> here from here. We'll, we'll, hear, we'll hear a Sue every now and again, but Ro, what's been happening this week? This week, um, your boy and Miguel. <laughs> your boy. <laughs> Never right. say that again. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound nice out of your mouth. I tried, I tried my best. I'm not really down with the lingo, but we, uh, we did a photo shoot, believe it or not. Unreal. I know, I'm sitting with celebrities right now. I know, it was the first ever photo shoot that we've done together. Very uncomfortable experience, mind you, but we'll get into it. But I, um, the like there was this uh, article or journalist that posted on LinkedIn. He put the call out. He said, anyone been playing pickleball recently? And so a few American listeners, you guys know exactly what pickleball is, but- it's Old news to you in America. Really. In Australia, however, the sport, I mean, it's, it's, it's loosely a sport. Yeah. I'll say that. It's more of a hobby. Yeah. And, and honestly, I literally read a stat today. Um, in Australia, the average age of pickleball players is like 55. So that tells you all you need to know. It exploded in America, which maybe makes sense because they're mostly Go like, on. pretty lazy uh, <laughs> and obese. Um, but it's growing here in Australia. And so, boys, we've played pickleball before. I, I put once. the call out. <laughs> you once. You've played once. Oh, so you guys have a couple of times. I'm a merchant. So I, I saw some TikToks and stuff and I was like, dude, this seems like a fun sport. Let's try it. So we played some pickleball, whatever. And then turns out it's pretty small in Australia. Mm. So I was like, oh, I'm actually doing a startup based around pickleball, selling like paddles and whatnot. The inventory hasn't come. We started on August the 1st, but that's, it's in progress. So I see this, you know, journalist put out the call for pickleball. And yeah. I think, here we go. It's time to, you know, I have a voice on the plat on, on a podcast. That's my platform. But I would like, you know, traditional media, a voice there as well. Yeah. In Multi-channel the- approach. Correct. And I also want to, sh- more importantly, I want to shill the startup that we're doing. <laughs> and so I reach out to Gus, the journalist. I say, hey man, I'm really interested in Pickleball. I've been playing it. I actually have a startup around it. And then he, he was like super happy to chat. Apparently the first guy that reached out to him was like this elderly gentleman. And he's like, uh, yeah, I really want someone in the demographic of the readers. And I oh. said, well, I am your man. <laughs> And so, you know, well, which, just, which uh, publication is this for? Oh, it's made a fine establishment. Australian Financial Review. Which you Would famously read. Every morning. Of course. I love Gus's work as well. He's actually one <laughs> of my favorite, favorite journalists. Your favorite opinion journalist. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Um, anyways, whatever. Do the phone interview. It was pretty chill. He asked me about pickleball and I just said, you know, I love it. Love the sport. Because I think his, his angle, what he wanted was like pickleball growing in Australia and how young people are taking it up. So he asked a lot of questions around- um, Leading questions. A lot of leading questions, a <laughs> lot of leading questions. And I was, agenda just, here then. I was just telling Big him what he ball. wanted to hear. Like if I'm being completely frank, yeah. I was just telling him stuff that like I thought would make a good story. No lies, but- To guarantee yourself in the publication. Exactly, right? So then he's like, oh, okay, cool. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> and when, can you, when are you free to take photos? And at first I was like, oh, I'm, I work from home. So I'm free like pretty much any time. Cause I thought he was gonna come to my house yeah. and just take a photo of me. <laughs> <laughs> what in your bedroom? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I expected that, but I just thought he was just coming over yeah. or a, a photographer was coming over and he's just take a photo. And he's like, oh, okay. Where do you play usually? Um, well, let's do there. And like, I don't, I, I told him I play every, every week mm. without fail, of sometimes course. twice a week with exactly. the boys. Absolutely. But um, I was like, oh yeah, I play at this uh, local, you know, badminton court that gets converted into a pickleball court. So now the lies are piling up, Nice. you know? So anyways, whatever. He's like, oh, cool. It'd be great if you could bring a friend. I'm like, all right, fantastic. I got lots of those. <laughs> <laughs> so then I, um, I put the call out on the group chat. I'm like, hey boys, anyone want to do a photo shoot with me? And the first person who replied was Glade. And he, and, and you know, it, it's pickleball, so it's a sport. But, and this guy has like 
half a ACL and no meniscus. <laughs> so I'm like, are you sure brother? And he's like, actually, no, I can't make it anyway. I got my girlfriend's admission. I'm like, you should probably go to that. Then Manu comes out, you know, <laughs> out of the woodwork. I'd love to do a, a photo shoot. So I'm like, oh, cool, no dramas, whatever. And so I've got Manu in there and we're gonna do the photo shoot. And now I got to find a way to, to get my product in front of the people. So I, we don't have any merch or anything like that just yet. So I'm like, oh, I'll print out some, I'll print out some stickers and chuck it on the paddles. Right. Like their paddles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't even own a paddle. <laughs> <laughs> like he has hired the paddles from the venue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then and put his your, own uh, shite on it. Yeah, fair. So that's what I was planning to do. And then I go around, I do the the rounds, uh, call office works. I'm like, hey, can you do this? Can you um, print stickers out? Yeah. And then they're like, yeah, yeah, we can print stickers out. I'm like, how much would that cost? And he's like, oh, it's $150. Turns out you can't really print stickers in like, I needed four stickers. <laughs> Office Works wanted 150 to give me. I said, Holy dude, I don't want 150 stickers. Yeah. I just want like, I just want like literally one A4 sheet yeah, yeah, yeah. of stickers. So they didn't do it. And then the other two places that I called, one quoted me $50 for six stickers and the other one quoted me $30 for six, six stickers. Are stickers meant to be this expensive? Well, I don't know. We bought Zazzle stickers. Yeah, I was gonna say, you, we have you, a sheet of critical band stickers. Probably cost us like five bucks. Yeah, yeah. we got paid cents on the dollar, dude. So anyways, I finally found this um, sticker printing place who would f- do it for 10 bucks, which oh, I thought perfect. was a more reasonable price. Yeah. But it, it's notoriously difficult to find stickers <laughs> at a reasonable rate here in Sydney. I had to drive like 30 minutes to get the stickers. Oh, God. So I get there, um, I get the stickers and then I, I think, oh, it's probably a good idea for me to call the owner of the badminton court and tell him that I want to play. Well, not really play. Uh, someone's going to be there taking photos. <laughs> like, luckily, I actually know the the dude who owns badminton nah, court. Okay, yeah, but um, yeah, every time I go, he's like, "How's Rohit?" <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he always asks. Rohit hasn't been here in a while. I'm like, uh, ask him. <laughs> so uh, I call Sanjeev. Is his name? Uh, <laughs> Shouting him out. <laughs> yeah, he's a nice guy. I'm shouting his business. Yeah, play point sports in Seven Hills. Twenty four. By the way, it's a twenty four seven. Yeah, I don't get seven. how that works. You put in a code. You put in another code inside, lights turn on. Have you been there past hours? I've been there on the weekend when it hasn't been staffed. Yeah, okay. But not like fucking At 9 3 p.m. I've been like, oh no, yeah, 3 p.m. Mm. You just got to put a code in to enter the venue. Then you got to put in another code to like turn on the court. So like what the a, lights are off. What and a trust. Tr- exactly. Because you can stay there for really sickly however long you want. Yeah, but the lights turn off. After an hour? Yeah. That's so it's programmed genius. based on your code. It knows your session and then it'll turn on court one lights for an hour. I had the same thought as you. I'm like, mate, there's no one. I'm going to stay there for the seven class- hours classic, and I'll pay for one it's hour. It's a classic tennis court maneuver. Yeah, you book right. it for 30 minutes and, and then, then hope no one books it next two hours and it's yours. Oh, that is actually quite- Yeah, that's ingenious. Sanjeev, bravo. Bravo to Sanjeev. Why he's opened up a new place in Blacktown. Yeah. Has he? he was give, a, give a shout we'll, out to we'll, that we'll one. We'll mention that. We'll, oh, yeah. we'll get onto that yeah. afterwards. All right. That's Talk- the point I want to bring up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I called Sanjeev the night before. I'm like, hey, brother, um, I've got a photo shoot with AFR. And I didn't really want to pay- yeah, weird flex on Sanjeev. It wasn't really, he didn't even know what was happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah, you think you want me to dress up? And I was like, dude, just be there at 11 o'clock and have pickleball set up. That's all I need from you. <laughs> uh, and he was like, oh yeah, yeah, no dramas, we can do that. So I get there at like 11, uh, 10-ish. Yeah. And Sanjeev's not there. And so I've called Sanjeev and I'm like, hey Sanjeev, where are you? Do you remember we had like a something planned today? And he's like, oh, for some reason I thought it was nine o'clock. And, and he hadn't set up, it was just a badminton court oh, at that gosh. stage. And I'm like, Sanjeev, come back. <laughs> so he's driven like 30 minutes from home to set up the court for us, which is actually really nice. So thank you Respect for that. Respect it, shout out you. And then, and then Miguel gets there and then the AFR photographer gets there and I've stuck, I've done all the shebang. I've stuck the um, stickers onto the, the demo paddles and uh, it's, it's, it's time to go. Yeah. And so Nigel, I think his name was Nigel or Russell or something. It was Peter. All right, whatever. Was it not? Doesn't I matter. Don't know. It doesn't matter. Let's Within five minutes, Ray already asked me what's his name and I couldn't tell you. <laughs> so Peter, Peter is the guy from the photographer. And when you think photographer, like my brother's a photographer and like the people that he works with are very like young and like trendy, yeah, yeah. that sort of thing. Peter was a uh, elderly gentleman and he was yapping away. Like <laughs> I would only describe his, his, his blubbering. Like, and, and I couldn't understand half of what he's saying. Strong stutter. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So we do a couple of it's shots. It's only less funny now, now that you've said that. No, 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 he's not, he's not disabled. He's, <laughs> he's not senile. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, you know, experienced. He could do okay. with like a Toastmasters course or two. Right. That's, that's okay. how I would describe it, right? <laughs> Toastmasters. <laughs> so me and Miguel, like we're novices. Like we don't know what we're doing. So I'm relying or we're relying on Peter to tell us what to do. And he's honestly not doing a very good job to be fair to him. Um, what equipment did he have? So you bring to be the big fair, lights, he had like, like these kind of studio lights or whatever, or? I think he had lights, but 
you've been to this court. It's well lit. Well lit, yeah. So like he asked Sanjeev to light up the whole court because only the court we were going to use was lit up. Uh, okay. So he's like, light up the whole court and then lights up and he was happy with the light. Okay. Mm. So he had like two DSLRs, one with a big boy lens. Mm. He was prepared. Okay, so yeah, he had the tools. Yeah, he had the old gear for sure. And so we were like, what was the first part? So he was like, oh. Because the issue is he also didn't know the rules because he's not the journalist. It's mm. a completely different guy. Right. So he doesn't know, th- he's just there to take photos. So he doesn't know the rules of pickleball. I mean, neither do you guys. <laughs> okay, we do. Come we on. know enough, right? So like, obviously you want to don't you want to frame it that it looks real, but he couldn't instruct us where to go because he didn't know he what was know. legal and yeah, what wasn't, right. what was the playing right, area. Right, right. It's also right. badminton court, right? So yeah. it's badminton lines. So like- we had to teach him how to play <laughs> to then he tells us where to go on the court. He probably thought you guys were the biggest losers. I don't know, man. He Throw seemed- out to seven hills and then had to stand there and let you idiots teach him how to play pickleball. He seemed like he was kind of into it. I don't know if that was his like shtick, but he was like, oh, like it seems like a pretty fun sport to play. Maybe he was just I being think he was just making conversation. <laughs> probably. Um, because I think he thought that we were really into it. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Yeah, Cause like we're getting an article uh, <laughs> <laughs> written about it. Exactly. And, and you know, and I like pickleball. You guys sport. are the Nigels, if anything. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever, the first pose is like, um, you know, Manny, like in pickleball, you usually do these like dink rallies. So you're like really close to the net. Like volleying low yeah, key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's like, oh, I'll just do some volleys around here. And he's taking some action shots. And my main concern is how do I get the stickers in front of the camp? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so unfortunately, like, because we're actually in motion, like there's a bit of a blur. So the stickers uh, are not shown whatsoever. And also I want to say something about this, right? So like <laughs> the photographer's on my side um, facing Rose. So Rose's head face is facing the camera. Gotcha. I'm back to- yeah. Thing. So obviously Ro's in the main shot, right? Um, and then he wants to see Ro volley, whatever. But obviously if we're playing normally, I'm a bit tall, right? So yeah. the way I'm hitting the ball, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, the way I'm hitting the ball, it's like when I hold the paddle, it's covering his face, right? Yeah. So brother got me to go so low, <laughs> like unbelievably low. Like I crash a little and he's like, come on, man. Like get lower than that. Like bend your knees. Yeah, so mine oh is in like an Asian squat position, volleying over the net in that position. That's impossible. And I had to like, it's not like we're just playing. Right? I had to stay exactly where I was standing. Yeah. So the shot was good. Good, yeah. Brother, my back fucking hurts, Hurt, man. I have right. some knee pain right now. It's the price I'm, of I'm like, shoot. Towards the end, I'm like, brother, surely you get the fucking 170 centimeter guy yeah, to swap exactly. with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. And then, and then we had the and then we had the the money shot, which is me and Miguel hey, hey, hey. laughing. So Miguel is instructed to just start hitting the, like keeping up okay, yeah, the yeah. ball with the ball. And to be paddle. fair, Peter demonstrating to us, man. He had a bit of tech is to oh, it. Yeah. Tech is on it. So Manny was hitting the ball up and he instructed me to just laugh and smile and- <laughs> and Make conversation. Yeah. And he was apparently the third uh, person in the conversation. So whatever, we take that. And then I have a look at the photos and the sticker, mate. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Beautiful the place. way it's framed as well, I saw like the net is right under the sticker. Mm. So the stick is right on, so there's a net. Cutting off just beneath the sticker. The sticker's right there, flush. Logan Paul, be proud. Yeah, uh, that's another thing I wanted to say. Like, mad respect to these influencers who somehow always get these. You know, like for example, Logan Paul gets the prime bottle in every shot and like perfectly, perfectly yeah, angled. Yeah. It's not easy because I was trying my best. Because like Manny's like hitting the ball up right, yeah. and I've just I'm just holding the paddle up like this, like in front of me, <laughs> to just make sure it's there. Whilst also trying to look like you're having conversation. Yeah, but I didn't care about that. I just wanted the. Laneway paddle to be in the- Here we go, <laughs> first of many, first of many. Um, in, the, in the shop. Anyways, whatever. It was actually a pretty fun experience. Who gets the final say on who chooses the photos? Probably Gus. So where's, where's the article now then? Yeah, it's probably what the listeners are asking. Rohit yeah, told told the boys, cause one of the, Rohan, shout out him, was gonna buy a copy um, when he came out. Rohit said Saturday, today well, Saturday. Gus told me. Yeah, Gus, uh, Gus told Rohit Saturday. Didn't mention which Saturday. Mm but just said Saturday. This morning, unfortunately, I was ready to buy about 10 coffees. <laughs> <laughs> no, no pickleball article. So I assume next Saturday. Um, It'll come we'll out. We'll see, we'll see. I um, I was having a look at Gus's articles. I mean, not his having a look. His portfolio? Yeah, his portfolio. Cause I just wanted to see who he was and what he was all about. Gus is notorious for a one photo in the article. Oh, no. That's it. Yeah. And me and Manu had like, we had like four shots maybe like four different types of shots. Right. And I was expecting maybe, you know, two or At three least, of them. Yeah, exactly. One in the headline, one in the middle, in maybe the body one in the body. Yeah. But Gus loves just a, a one and done. He's and so a I don't know, Smith, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know what is going to come out, whether the money shot of the, the sticker will actually even be in- Well, article. I'll even be in it, you know? Yeah, Manny, Manny has- The first set of photos is just my arm, really. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, so we'll see you next Saturday. We'll post a photo off in the stories and stuff, but yeah, photo shoot, done and dusted. Models is now on the resume. <laughs> <laughs>
Look, I have nothing else to go off, so I'm going to say the answer is dog. Incorrect. The answer is not dog. You reckon I'm calling my dog idle and idle. tight? Uh, yeah, that's so why I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. All right, what is the answer? If you remember, Sandy, when we used to play summer soccer, there was one fine evening when Rohit and I rocked up with the same boots. I don't remember this. Oh, that what? goes to show how much you pay attention. <laughs> Rohit and I have the same soccer boots, same football boots. Ah, okay. But mine are for artificial grass. That's why I don't wear them. That's why they're just sitting on my that's shelf. That's idle. Idle. And that's tight, why they're tight. Ah, tight. That's why they're Respectfully, tight. they fit well. I just couldn't think of anything, but I thought that would lead you to why, Where's choose. nine from? That's the size, baby. Uh, yeah, you know, what size? I don't think your size would be nine, dude. Your feet are small. Yeah, that's why they're nine and a half. <laughs> but to be honest, Harley actually is nine. So you no, have that's eight and a half, maybe? Yeah, eight and a half, maybe. And a half, maybe, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Okay. All right, so Sandy gets no points, right. right? Zero. Um, I'll walk out this time. Okay. And then you two call me when you're done. All right, jog on Manu. All right, Sen. So Manu's out of the room. Sen, what are we thinking to do? I'm thinking, um, let's go girlfriend. Okay. Thoughts? He has one as well, but no, that's all right. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, he wouldn't think of it then. 100%. Might throw him off. All right. Manu! I've summoned the man back. <laughs> Gush, leave that in. All righty, all righty. This will be interesting. Rowie, Rowie, Rowie. How's yours? Short. Mine's short. Yourself. Go on, go on, Senny. <laughs> Here we Senny? go. Sen, how's yours? Far. Short and far is what I have to play with so far. Anything tickling your fancy? Short, far. Alrighty, Sen, round two. How's yours? Brown. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mine, I, I had a guess off the first two, but I'll wait till row. How's yours? Mine is chatty, I would say. Well, I've, I've got a guess and I went off the first two, but I'm not sure, first of all, the height of your brothers mm. and where your sister lives. Those are things <laughs> on record, I don't know. But I think I have to at this point, chatty, I've met your brother. <laughs> Which one? The sh youngest one, notoriously mm. yaps away like you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And yep, sends a clue goes without saying. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to lock in sibling. Oh, you were close. It is a person, but it is girlfriend. Far. Yeah. Relative, relative. Relative, to relative. Is Shady. half an hour far? Absolutely, it's far. I wouldn't. I would not describe it as far. I mean, because it's a she. I and also, my, has living far. <laughs> my girlfriend also lives near yours. It's, I don't think it's far. Relative. Relative, relative to everything. Would you say short, chatty? Fair enough, would you say? Brown. Far, brown. Far. brown. <laughs> I guess. I, I was going to go Asian, but I thought that would be, that would be too obvious. That would have been no? obvious. I think yeah, you would have gone by that. Maybe, maybe, but. Because you were thinking of people already. Yeah, mm. I was straight on to people, but. Right. Fair enough. Decent. No point for me. All right, off I go, Rowie, please. Be gone. So Rose has gone. What are we, what are we thinking, Senny? What's something that we both have? I want to make it hard for him. <laughs> because we don't have any points yet. <laughs> we don't have any points. So I want to I want to bring him down a notch as well. Right, we something doing? conceptual. Something that doesn't exist, maybe. Go on. I'm the, I played a lot of FIFA first of all this morning, so I'm thinking <laughs> my 91 rated Golden Bappe. You're lucky. I still have him, bro. I nearly right. sold him, but I still have him. So Beautiful. we can go with that one. We call him back in? Yep. Roe! Get in, Ro. We have a, a clue for you. Okay. Who do I start off with? Maybe Manu, you go first. How's yours? Mine is fast. All right. Nice. Sen, how's yours? Sweaty. Fast and sweaty. I'm thinking like, for some reason, now I'm thinking of animals as well, but Sen doesn't have a pet. Am I, am I at all on the right track? Fast and sweaty. So it is a, it is a thing. Like it's, it's not an object. It's like a, like, I don't know, is, is your dad sweaty? <laughs> like, I reckon Alan, Miggs' dad, he's pacey. You reckon he's got a bit of pace to him? I reckon absolutely he's got a bit of pace to him. And Sen's dad, I don't know if your dad's sweaty, but I mean, yeah. How is that the first <laughs> thing that you've gone to? <laughs> like sweaty, I don't know, man. I don't know. All right, all right. Um, okay, I'm thinking it's some sort of, you're related to this person maybe? And like, it can't be some nonsense like your cousin. No. I mean, actually I do know your cousin. <laughs> so, and he is sweaty. 
Is your cousin Perpetually. fast? <laughs> he's actually always sweaty. Triple cheese. Triple cheese is sweaty. But I don't know Migs' cousin. You reckon my bloodline has a bit of, you see me on the football pitch, is little to none. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, let's see. Ten, how is yours? Broken. Dude, this is getting dark real quick. Mm. Is, is Triple Cheese a broken man? Actually, to be fair, Triple Cheese, we had an intervention with him on Tuesday. About and he actually is broken. He's like work. He's getting slogged to work. And honestly, he's getting some real depressing like snaps. So, you know, are you okay? Uh, broken, honestly, no help. Uh, Migs, please help. I think me. I'll help you out with this one. How's yours? Meta. Mm. I was going to say that as well. I had two words in mind. I'll, yeah. I'll choose that one just to make it a bit more crystal. Yeah. Crystal Meta. Clear. So it's a game? What game do you guys play? Probably FIFA, because that's sweaty, like sweaty goals. So I'm thinking it might be a a striker, but do I have to name the player? Absolutely. Okay, well if I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna know. I mean it could I think it is a player. But I don't know any players. Fine, we'll help you out. I can give you hundred percent certainty you can name this person. You just have to think. Might be in our nation no, in mind. <laughs> I was going to say something. But would you use, maybe it's not FIFA. Maybe Meta is just a player in our soccer team and I can definitely name them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're right on the first track. We're giving you an ample clue. Okay, so I was right, about fair. to give you another clue. So no, we're done with the clues. Yeah, we're done yeah. with the clues. But this is more because I don't know any soccer player. It's not. All right. Okay. Well, I'm just going to go, you know, um, Tim Cahill. Fortunately not, Ro. It is the 91 rated gold Mbappe. I would have taken, oh. I would have taken Mbappe at that point. One of my clues, I would have said oh. turtle. I would have said turtle as well, turtle but I don't know if he knows that. Yeah. I don't know that. That would have okay. been no help. The notorious, the only notoriously fast footballer, I feel. Yeah, that's actually on And me. also I actually global that. superstar, not some niche mm. player as well. For some reason, I thought it was going to be super niche, but I think the meta, that, that clue actually helped out because otherwise- Dude, honestly, I had, I had zero idea. I was going to say, you know, Nick Tan. <laughs> <laughs> he gives the gummy of someone on our team. Yeah, uh, he's, mate, he's actually a superstar. I'm excited to play with him not, today not, after not, the podcast. Not Dinu? No, not, not him? Or, or Dinu, honestly, both of them. He, That's enough yeah. of right. naming people. <laughs> so niche, okay. All righty, first round, not a great showing. Nil, nil all, all around the board, but we'll, we'll go again. And hopefully now that you guys have understood the game idea, we've warmed up a little, we can get a better idea. Senny with his most solo jerseys getting the hell out of here. And Roe and I will come up with another another clue. What are you thinking? I think you know, we're all at nil all. Mm. I think let's go a bit a bit easier. Okay. Um, we'll go white socks, I reckon. Sen! See how it goes. Should see, it's an easier one than the first. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All righty, Ro, how's yours? White. Mine's white. All right. Manu, how's yours? Old. Mm. Okay, wide and old. Photographer? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel. What do you, Peter? I don't know. He's was. coming to mind right now. That's you've given some beautiful clues, nice and vague. I have to go again. Ro, how's yours? Mine is long. Okay. Real vague. <laughs> Real generic. Is, I've got. <laughs> I've actually got nothing to go off here. Throw a bone here, Mike. Yeah. Let me throw your bone, Sunny. Yes. Not not too juicy a bone. No, I'll, throw a, uh, right. I'll throw a bone. Miguel, how's yours? Smelly. Is that actually meant to be helpful? Well, when you put all four together, it's really okay. easy once you know it. <laughs> yeah, thanks, bro. <laughs> if you're White, at home with the clue already in old, mind. Old, smelly, and long. Real long. <laughs> Real long. Wow. To be honest, I'll be honest, my clues are a bit annoying. Okay. Um, I will let you ask me how's yours one more time. Is that allowed? Because I feel like you've got no idea. I don't want no to break idea. the rules. I, I, I do have no idea. We'll give it one more. I'll All see. right. One last one, Ro. Help me out here. How's yours? Mine is Nike. You guys have already done football boots already. So I'm thinking shoes maybe. Socks is another one which makes sense. Old, smelly. That's where I'm leaning towards. Shoes or socks, one of the two. Which one are you Long in? though. Would you describe them as long? <laughs> what? Nike. <laughs> Why'd you say Nike? Or Nike to you. <laughs> <laughs> UK listeners. 
All right. I, I honestly have no idea. I'm going to go with socks. You're going to go with socks? Yes. Spot on, mate. Well, well on the board, you, mate. Thank you. Wait, long Ooh, socks. Long. Yeah, it's I not don't that know. long. I would say these are long. They're not long enough to be called long. Yeah, I, true, true. <laughs> I should have said like, would crew have given it away? Crew, crew, that, like, crude. Crew, crew, crew. Like, like crew, crew cuts. cuts. Oh no, that would have definitely well, thrown me in the wrong direction as well. I think crew would have been a nice one. Yeah, if you know, it. you know type vibe. Yeah, exactly, mm. exactly. All right, right Manu, get the hell out of here. I'm thinking, Sen, we do a laptop, but maybe make it more specific. Mac? Maybe a Mac MacBook. Yeah, yeah, definitely. right. All right, Manny. All righty, Rowie. How's yours? It's bloody expensive. All righty, I've got zero idea. So Rowie, you'll go again. How's yours? Uh, mine's laggy. Laggy? That's how I would describe it. Expensive and laggy for you. And you, Sen, how's yours? I'll be nice. I'll give you two words. Middle-aged. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is a blank face. Middle-aged. In other words, it's not new, but I wouldn't say it's old either. Middle-aged, laggy, basic. Basic. Expensive. It's a MacBook. Bang! Well oh, no. That's clutch. That's, That's well done. That's clutch. That's clutch. That's clutch. <laughs> oh, my God. Now I'm a bit worried here. This is, <laughs> this is dicey for me. Dare I suggest that middle age actually helped me out a lot. Let's see, mate. Trust the process. We'll trust the process. As Ro walks away. All right. I think we maybe stay on... <laughs> You came in it. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. But, uh, you know, we, we we went conceptual last time, so I'm saying let's go conceptual again. What are you thinking? Well, the, the, th the talk of triple cheese has got me thinking maybe. Oh, my God. The will to live is maybe. You definitely got that. We'll see. When you <laughs> do, it depends on what he asks me. But, yeah, I think that's what I think we'll be. Right, we'll go with will to live. Rohit, it's one to me, one to send, zero to you. But there's no ties in this game, so you'll have a triple coin to see who gets the point. Yeah, that's fine with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sen, how's yours? Wavering. Wavering. Okay. Manny, how's yours? Fleeting. What kind of existential item is this? <laughs> and Sen's laughing like there's an evil laugh, so it means I'm definitely not going to get this. Fleeting and wavering. <laughs> Why do I feel like it's like will to live or something like that? You can ask more questions, mate. Well, I can really only ask one question. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask the same question again. And that is, how's your sin? Faltering. <laughs> Are you taking the piss? <laughs> Manny, how's yours? Rare. Rare, wavering, faltering. What was the last one? Fleeting. Fleeting. Wow. Well, I have no idea. And I'm offering someone to throw me a bone here, but none is forthcoming. So I think it's not a thing. I think it's like a, I feel like I'm leaning towards this concept. Yeah, well, so, that will help you out with that at least. Well, I already got that. Well, there you go. There's your bone. <laughs> There's You're welcome. Bone. Right. So you actually just told me confirmed. What I knew. We confirmed. No, something. but it couldn't be an object. How like, do you know? Well, because the words that you use don't describe objects like it that. Could, it could be an object in a way. Okay, just shut up now. This okay. is just getting frustrating. <laughs> All right. Maybe it's, uh, I'm going to say, a moment of joy. Wow. That is unreal. But it's wrong. It's, it's also wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the worst part is, Ro? What? You said it earlier. You said it. What was it? It's will to the live. The will to live. Get out of here. Are you serious? <laughs> I, Dude. Thought, I thought we were going one all. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't believe I got close. <laughs> you got the spot that, on. You actually had it. I was I was shook. I was looking at my I'm like, there's no way this guy's just gone. I made a little sound when you said it as well. That's and in my head, I'm like, I'm gonna have to try and gaslight you here. Say it's like something else. It could be an object. Yeah, it could be an object. <laughs> Dirty dogs. All right. Well now, I mean, I lost, but now one of you has to lose. So give us a scissor paper rock to- Mike, can I remind you of maybe the 2020 Olympics when in the high jump, <laughs> they got to a point where the two jumpers couldn't. I saw that TikTok the other and day. Exactly. And the umpire's <laughs> oh, like, you could here. do another jump or you can just share the goal today. The umpire actually didn't say that. The Qatari high jumper asked, can I have two goals? Exactly. <laughs> so Martin, I'm going to ask you, should we just share the chocolates today? Take a half point each and 
get out of here while we I can. Think, I think we should then. I think we should. Beautiful. <laughs> so scores on the doors. Miguel at 1.5, Ro at 1, Sen at 0.5, and Kushagra, Kundra slash Cristiano Ronaldo poster is on zero. And that could that could come to cost him, really. The, yeah, the half point in the end could be all the difference. Really. Exactly. So. It probably won't be, but <laughs> it could. Score on the board is always good. Breaking, breaking news, fellas. Manscaped now has beard products available in your country. That's right. They are once again revolutionizing men's grooming with the brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. From a beard trim to a fresh shave, the technology behind the Beard Hedger Pro Kit allows you to shape your signature beard look like never before. Now you can find these Manscaped products to make your drapes match your carpet by going to manscaped.com and using code TCB for 20% off and free shipping. Boys, I am I am alone here in the Manscaped read, but that is for good reason. I'm the only one without a beard. The other three boys are currently right now grooming their beards, using the kit, using the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. And what are they using, boys? They're using the Beard Hedger which is the lovely, lovely trimmer. It's got 20 hair cutting lengths. It's got a titanium coated T-blade and it's also waterproof. Enough said. But the kit also comes with a beard shampoo and conditioner, comes with a lovely little beard oil and comes with a beard balm as well. Like that is everything you need for your beard in a kit. I have heard, I cannot say I've used it, but if I had a beard, this would be the thing I use. And not only, they don't stop them. With this new kit, they have three free gifts. Who doesn't love a freebie? They've got a beard brush, a comb, and scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code TCB at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code TCB. Manscaped Beard Hedger, one stroke, one guard, 20 lengths. This is Cock, I'll be Cucked. Cock or be cocked. Alrighty, our first one for this week is a listener submission. Sorry, Sen, firstly, what is cock or be cocked? Excellent question. Um, on a cuckoo be cuck is a segment where we tell stories where someone has been mugged off, I guess, mm. or has been bettered by someone else. And we, we try and help them maybe how could they have avoided this situation or how could they get back? And we also judge how bad it was. And we judge our, how badly they got With our critical off. banter trademarked cuckatoos. Mm-hmm. Correct. Mm-hmm. So we've got two stories this week, both listener based ones. We'll start off with the first one. This one was told to us like Moses was told by God. <laughs> So this was this isn't written in. This was actually verbally uh, exchanged to us, and this comes from Sav, who's in our soccer team. We'll be seeing him in half an hour. We will be seeing him in half an hour. He also um, has my deep heat, which I need to take off him, but that's besides the point. <laughs> um, he was basically telling us, and Ro, you you missed this, and Manu and I basically were there, and he was telling us about they were talking about as we often do, reminiscing about high school. Mm. They were talking about, and to borrow another term of ours, rare units from high school, and they brought up one guy in particular who. Even now, to this day, apparently one of them met up with him and he was still as strange as he was in year seven to year 12. The way that it was framed was they were talking about this guy, let's call him Jack. And then one person said, oh, Jack's, you know, good guy these days, pretty normal. And then, you know, this is where Sav jumped in. He's like, mate, Jack's a bit of a fuckwit. Yeah, exactly. And so essentially what had happened was, and maybe let's take it back to, let's say this was year seven. um, And Jack had, and I don't know this was a thing, they had like a play date. So Jack had come over to Sav's house um, for the first time ever. Mm. And as you would often do to, when you go to some, over to someone's house, you bring a gift. And when you're, you know, you're seven, 12 or 13, maybe a gift would be- yeah, Chocolates. Chocolates, exactly. Yeah. A box of what, you, what you're told when you're, not, when you're told not to bring a thing, mm-hmm. you know? But obviously Jack over here was a bit sophisticated. So he brought a wonderful bottle of red wine, Pinot Grigio maybe. At 13 years of age. At 13 years of age. And so he just stole it from mum's shelf and decided to give it to Sav. So he, he walked in, made a beeline right past Sav and passed the beautiful bottle of red to Sav's mum. Oh, mate, he sounds like a well-mannered young fella at this Hold point. your horses. And then he's like, oh, can I use your bathroom? And then Sav's mum's like, oh, of course, please, you know. You've bought a bottle of wine, Sukasa, what's it? Mikasa, Mikasa Sukasa. Exactly. So he's like, you know, the bathroom's just down the corridor on the right. 
So Jack starts walking and he goes up the stairs. <laughs> Which is not on the right. And then he went left. And then he went into Sav's bedroom. <laughs> okay. And then went into Sav's bathroom. <laughs> and then went into Sav's shower and proceeded to take a piss in Sav's shower. <laughs> what? No right. questions asked. No questions asked, mate. Was, was he drunk? <laughs> like, did he have the other bottle of red in <laughs> the car on the way? Potentially. So Could've off been. to a great start here. Came in. So he's come in, given a bottle of, so he's rizzed up the mum. Yep. And, and then, then pissed in the shower. The this life. guy might be part dog because he's gone up there and just marked his territory. <laughs> yeah. And then he's come down. And the point of the play date was to, you know, kick a footy around in the backyard, a bit of soccer in the backyard. Mm. So he's done his business upstairs. He's come down. Apparently they still haven't kicked him out of the house at this point. <laughs> yeah. And then they go out the back and they start having a kick around. And then within maybe three or four minutes, apparently Jack's not had a good time and the balls roll over to him. Instead yeah. of passing it back to Sav, he's picked it up and then absolutely fucking launched the ball <laughs> into the next postcode <laughs> over the fence into the, yeah, into the next the hills the adjacent and miles suburb. Away. <laughs> yeah. And then at that point they realized, oh, <laughs> Jack's a bit of a fucking weirdo. <laughs> Please leave our house. And no, I think the things they didn't tell him to leave. Yeah, they didn't he left. He left. He left on his own accord. Wait, so this guy just boots the ball over the fence and then leave. And then he went home. <laughs> so to recap, he came, brought a bottle of wine, rizzed up their mum, <laughs> pissed in his shower, and then kicked and lost their soccer ball and left without any further ex- explanation. Um, of He two came, exact. he saw, and he conquered. Exactly. That's excellent. What did Sav do to this poor guy? <laughs> to warrant, like pissing in the shower. I mean, at least in piss in the bedroom, which is what I thought was going to happen. He built, he pissed in a place that water can drain. Mm. Is, that the <laughs> lo- is that the low bar that we're setting? That's the low bar. I mean, like maybe he's just used to that, you know, because people piss in the shower all the time when they're having a bath. But at another person's house? <laughs> That's very- well, I mean, Not in the guest's bathroom, at least. <laughs> in someone's personal <laughs> it's bathroom. It's funny where it's like, hey, you know, Jack, here's the bathroom, yeah. please. And he just strolls on past <laughs> and goes upstairs. And obviously maybe he's never been to the house because this is the first time. So he's opening everyone's bedrooms, <laughs> trying to find the bathroom. Yeah, and he then he's he found didn't it. find Sav's bedroom first go. Yeah, exactly. He's going into mum and dad's, trying to look for the ensuite. And then he was in the shower. So how many, how many cockatoos are we giving to Sav for this? Honestly, I, like before the cockatoos, I don't know how you come back from this. Because oh, yeah, this is yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, this, is... this is unhinged behavior. <laughs> Cause you, you don't, you don't stoop to his level. You don't go to his house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Then you're deranged. No, cause this is like the most, yeah. This is never let them know your next move. I was gonna say, this is like... literally those TikToks of never let them know your next move. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna say like, I think it's a, I think it's two, like a cockatoo for the- um, The rizzing of the mum. Yeah, you're letting your mum get rizzed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so by a 13 year old. So that's two there. Okay, two for the rizzing. Okay. I think, I think honestly two for the shower. Oh, I think the shower pissing is the biggest <laughs> mug off out of all of them. It's the context of he knows what the bathroom is. Exactly. How many cockatoos, cockatoos are you thinking? I mean, at least three or four for the- Three, I'll settle a three. Three for the shower. So it's up then, to five so running total. Five. And then losing a, a perfectly good soccer ball. Yeah, that's, I give that a one. That's nah, a, that's that's a, a one. low range. Cause that, cause that yeah. can happen, right? That's just a bit of Tom no, no, it, it, <laughs> That's okay. horseplay. But I think combined with then just walking home. <laughs> yeah, but the walk home is separate. I give that a two on its own. That he, that, at that point he left. I don't think you can separate the kicking of the soccer ball to the walking yeah, home. Yeah, it's one action for me. So, so that, I, I think that's I'll two a, for that. Two or three. So we're on seven. All right, so Sav's it's seven cockatoos. And is there any way, like, honestly- You got to go back the next week into his house and then show him who's the boss is the only way you could come back from that. No, I think I think you have to. You don't you don't piss in the shower or anything like that. I think you just if he's got a sister or something, you just got to start dating the sister. You actually riz up someone, <laughs> yeah, in his family or his dad or something. <laughs> that, I think that's the only but way. But he's not getting back, back at him. I don't think that is sister. Sister is a but mom is the <laughs> yeah. Mom would be the it's outrageous one. Yeah, sister is bare minimum because then you go to school and it's like I'm dating your sister and yeah. then what can he do? Imagine exactly. when you said. But this. I don't think this is phasing this guy. Dude. This guy is. We're not. He's in. The, he's on a different realm. This guy. Nah, I think your sister getting raised is not even raised. Like dated. If you start dating the sister, and especially if she's older than you in year seven, first of all, you're a big dog for dating an older yeah. girl. Second of all, this guy can't say anything to you because I'm dating your sister. Is the comeback at all points in time. Remember in high school, like- That is true. You, you guys, try, yeah, you're trying to give my mom's number at 25 years of age, <laughs> you know? It's still hilarious. That would have been unbelievably funny in, in year seven. All right, so poor Sav, you're gonna get seven cockatoos there and, well, actually 
it's we're now what fourteen years. Yeah, at this point, this, thirteen nothing, years. Except tell tell the tale. Yeah, mm. so that's actually probably one of the greatest cockatoos because yeah. you there's nothing you can do now. It's well past the point. So sorry for that, South. Right, we got another one sent in by another friend, Rohan. Shout out, Rohan. So what has happened to this this fine young gentleman? Is one day he was on Facebook Marketplace, and he was in the market for a, a cologne. Um, and then you cologne aficionados out there will know about what was it Mason Mycin Margella? Yeah. It's uh, the replica one. So those actually are a bit a bit actually, I think about 100, 200, something like that per bottle. And he found one, I think by the fireplace, lovely scent for for men. He I think he saw it uh for listed for about 40, 50 bucks. So mm. he's getting it at least half price, right? Um and the description said, what do you say? Like Few sprays only or something. Yeah, it's been like sprayed once or twice. Was what. So it's he's saying. being sold a basically almost full, brand new, almost yeah. brand new um, perfume cologne for about half price, right? Mm. So what he's done is he's obviously messaged, contacted the seller, as they say in marketplace, asked <laughs> if it's still still available, and said, "Yeah, beautiful, still available, right?" Um, and what our friend Rohan did is he saw that he he has told us that he normally goes on Facebook Marketplace and does the thing where, you know, you meet halfway or you meet in a public place and you pick it up. Yeah. But then he's Google Maps their location two hours away. Too far away. Something like that. So he's like, no, thank you. Let's um, let's do a delivery, which, you know, maybe caution there already. So he set up for delivery um, and the person has told him that he wants to be paid up front. You know, so Rohan sends the 50 bucks first and then the person will send the perfume out, which is, you know, susceptible to scam. So our friend Rohan has said, I'll send you 25 now. I'll send you 25 when it gets delivered, right? Savvy. Savvy. He's a man that knows what's going on. So what, so after that, yeah, fair enough. They agree. He sends his address, I think. Um, then he uh, beams him 25 bucks and then he gets sent a tracking code, right? Um, our friend Rohan, busy man. He's no a time. Busy man. He's a, what does he do? Lawyer. Lawyer so he's exactly. got a million other things to worry about. It doesn't check the tracking code. To be fair, I don't check tracking codes. You know, if I get a code, inshallah, take it'll, word for it'll it. get to me, right? So he's got a tracking code. Um, and I think he was told, let's say, you know, come within seven business days, right? Seventh business day comes, our mate Rohan's like, no package. Is it? He's got a fucking camera on his doorbell. No fucking delivery sent. Mm. So it hasn't been delivered. Um, and then he's tried to go on Facebook. I'm um, message person be like, hey, what's going on? Um, hasn't been, I haven't received yet. Can't find him. Ghost. Gone with the wind. So somehow, Locked some him. way he has realized that he has been blocked by the seller. Beautiful. Um, and then he's like, you know what? Maybe this is just, at that point, he's still like, maybe this is just a bit, you know, <laughs> coincidence. Yeah, FedEx is taking a bit of time. Exactly. So he goes on to FedEx or OzPost, whatever it was, puts in the tracking code, item not found. Damn. So he's been sent some random 14 digit number and there's no item in delivery. It doesn't stop there, right? So he has paid with bank transfer, I believe, which silly, Rohan, silly. You go through PayPal because PayPal, PayPal yeah, exactly. refunds you no, no thrills, no nothing, no questions asked. So he's had to go through the bank, right? And his bank has told him, oh, yeah, sorry, mate, sorry to hear that. Uh, this happens. Uh, we, can, we can investigate it and sort of refund the money you bank transferred. It'll be a $35 fee to Dude. go in, <laughs> retrieve your $25 and hand that back to you, right? So, you know, financially, you don't want to be fucking negative $10. You're down 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but then he's also already down 25, you know? So maybe 10 is a bit better, but then also it's not worth it. It's not worth the hassle. So have I, have I missed anything in this, this tale? Nah, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, first of all, Loki ingenious scam. Oh, I was going to say that's, he's been done by an absolute master, mastermind here. Because if I get sent a tracking number, I don't know if I'm entering that in. I'm just, you know, the transaction is above board. And also, you know, to be fair, the, like him buying a clone, when it's too good to be true, it's probably- It often is. You know, yeah. We, we spat out recently in the pod a few weeks, you know, if it's too good to be true, it is. The muck, too good to be true. <laughs> this perfume, too good to be true. Cause like my like my partner gets Mason Margiela perfume. I think they're more than two, I think they're like $300. They're expensive. I wanted like to especially buy- Especially the replica one. Yeah, I wanted to buy one in Europe, man. Exy. Mm. To, to get it for $50 is- But are you buying cologne on Facebook or Marketplace? I've never, never once thought never. of that as an item fair, that my, my partner, second hand. My partner has sold, but like brand new, you know? 
Like she probably bought it two years ago. Still in, yeah, still in box. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Still yeah. in box. It sells it. Be a few spritzes. <laughs> then sells it for like half the price, which I think is fair. But if it's already open, I need that like ten bucks. You know what I mean? Because you already opened it. Mm. The risk to reward is they could fill it with water or some shit. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. That, but if you if, if you go there, you obviously give it a couple of sprays, and it's not like my. I mean, it's not like the, my Jimmy Choo's perfume rated the <laughs> second worst scent for men that my mum bought me from the airport. Oh, this is hot in demand. Exactly. You smell it and you'll think, wow, this is, you'll yeah, know if it's the same. You'll know if it's here. Yeah. So how many cockatoos are we getting to row hunt here? <laughs> okay. Because he, because he didn't get scammed the full 50, that's he a plus a to him. Yeah. Because he could have been the full 50. And let's be real. The scam is actually not that much. He lost 25 bucks in there. That's the story. But so, for the other person, that's 25, but easiest work ever. Absolutely easy this work. Ingen- it's ingenious. Yeah. <laughs> All bases covered. She probably uses that code every single time and then just blocks them immediately. It actually reads as I scammed you in like numbers <laughs> yeah. and letters if you look close enough. <laughs> but that's why I don't think it's, I don't think it's a massive scam because it's only the amount that he got scammed was not a lot. But it's the perfect amount, you know? No, 25. Okay. It's actually the no, perfect two, two amount. No, 2-2 scam. Because it's, yes. it's way hard to scam a hundred bucks. Because look, this person's getting away with it. The yeah. thing what would have happened if the bank looked into it, they would have taken that money out of the person's bank account. Cause I think they're with the same bank. I think that's what he was saying. Yeah. Yeah. But I think like- So this person I think has set the price at such a point where they know the risk and reward, the payoff to refund it is not worth it. That is true. So I think Rohan's been masterminded. That is I'll true. be honest yeah, with you. That is true. I think he's that's been masterminded. Something. Yeah, okay. Because it was more like you don't you don't steal a million dollars from one person. You steal one dollar from a million <laughs> people. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Fair play. All right. Well, that's fair enough. But I still think because he didn't get scammed that much, I think he just gets one cockatoo for the scam. Okay. And then one for it. And then one from the bank. I, I think, think the bank- multiple from the bank. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, like three from the bank. Because imagine dare you're they? the banker. Yeah. <laughs> and you know this guy wants his twenty five dollars back, and you have the audacity to tell him. Give me 35 <laughs> and I will get you 25 back. Yeah, the administration I think the bank fee. is just pocketing 10 bucks. I don't think they're going into the account at all. No, of course not. No, the administration fee is outrageous. 35 bucks. Like For what? We, we got a fine when we went to Brisbane and their administration fee was oh, $55. Yeah. For what? For, for having the courtesy to pass the fine on to, to send us. an email. <laughs> like outrageous. It's just like when you buy um, concert tickets, the booking fees like 10 bucks or something. Yeah. Or Five like, bucks per ticket. Like at the movie cinema tickets, six dollars per processing fee. <laughs> For what? <laughs> what have you done? You press two buttons on yeah. the screen and hand me a ticket. No, it's outrageous. And it's kind of, it's very funny that the, the fee was more than how much he wanted to get yeah. back. So I think I gets two cockatoos. Okay. So he's getting so he's three. three and you know redemption. I don't think you there is no redemption. He's scamming yeah. back. Because you're either scamming the scam or you're going up against one of the biggest banks in Australia, pick your, pick your enemy. I you think the really bank, the bank is kind of a lost that's cause. That's a foregone, exactly. But I think the scammer, there's a way, very convoluted, How? it'll take a lot of time. You got to get a burner because he's blocked, right? Mm. Oh. You've got to get a burner account. You got to think about how you can. Get- I think if you're going to that much effort for a scammer, you're you're getting more cockatoos for that point. But it, I think is it should, worth it? It's not worth getting back at the original scammer. But I think you can redeem yourself by becoming the a new scammer. <laughs> well, actually, let me redeem this. This man Rohan is a RuneScape scammer. Oh my god! He scams god. kids off RuneScape. So Darius just this is karma. Yeah, he scams little kids off their one million coins, their Rune armor and shit, and he gets a sick satisfaction from it. <laughs> Every time he does it, he messages the- victimless crime me- though. Oh, victimless. Yeah. Have what you about little Tim- on RuneScape? Man, it's, it's, it's devastating. What about little Timmy that has farmed wood for like three months and lost his fucking armor to Mage Rohan so- 1. That's his fucking <laughs> RuneScape username. Mage underscore Rohan 1, block him. So I didn't play, I played RuneScape and it was too hard for me. So mm. I played a knockoff game called Mscape, which was the same thing. The private servers. The private servers, but it was just the same game. It was just a little bit easier it's to like level It's like modded and right, custom. Okay, right. So you didn't have to spend like a million hours, hours of your time, yeah, right? Yeah. So it was a little bit easier. And I remember getting scammed. I did do some scamming. I'll be honest, I'll put my hands up. But I remember being scammed in the early days of Mscape and I thought my life is over. Because <laughs> at 15 years of age, when you lose your dragon armor- Oh, it's- like. That's it your entire world. Devastating. Yeah. Man, I have a similar story. I was on the real RuneScape, you know, and I'm at the Grand Exchange, shout out the GE, <laughs> north of Varric. Thank you very much. <laughs> and then I fell victim. This is like 10 year old Miguel or something. I fell mm. victim, right? Yeah. I saw someone saying, buying Rune Skimitar, 50K. And then I saw someone on the other side of the GE selling Rune Skimitar, 30K. <laughs> Beautiful. And I'm like, this is the classic buy low, sell high, yeah, yeah, yeah. flip. <laughs> 
<laughs> I bought it for 30K. It's arbitrage, bro. Yeah. It's arbitrage, bro. It's zero it's Trading runes. 101. Exactly. So I buy the rune skimmer to R30. I walk over to where the guy was, you know, buying the rune skimmer are 50. Logged off. Gone. And then another scam, you know what? That's, oh. that's a good one. I like that one. And then another one I got uh, done by. This is very niche, right? <laughs> so in RuneScape, you can, you, when you go to the bank, have you guys played RuneScape? Yeah, of course, man. Not in like 10 years at least. You know, how, you know how you can go to the bank and get items in the actual item or a note? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember that? It's like you can get your rune yes. and wield it or you can have it as a note form, right? Yeah. yeah. So what got done to me was someone was selling a rune two hand, right? Mm. For, I don't know, 10K, <laughs> which normally goes for 50K. So you're not- I'm going to buy this. Too good to be true. 10K, I put in the thing and then the dirty dog, this is before you had to confirm the trade, I think. Dirty dog, because and then and the pictures in the trades are like tiny, right? You can barely you see. Can't see. You have to hover over it to see the like the name of it or whatever, right? Mm. So he has a rune skip, uh, two hand in a note form in the mm. trade. And then I put my money in and right before I press ex- accept, yep. he flips it to a iron two hand, right? Oh, yeah. And then he quickly presses accept and I press accept. And before I know it, I've been, an iron two hand goes for like 500 coins. <laughs> so I've been scammed 9.5K to, and nine year old Miguel's crying because it's probably taken me bloody three school afternoons to get that money. Exactly. And I'm there getting scammed. So, you know, give me some cups. Fastest hands in the West, man. Dude, exactly. that, that's how I got scammed as well. Exactly the same thing. We're victims. Like, yeah, we're actually victims because <laughs> because it's the sleight of hand from them. And honestly, for me, I got scammed because I was greedy because I was actually selling an item and he was putting out coins. And so I was selling, uh, like it was probably like a rune scimitar or something yeah. like that. And I don't know how much they go for, but he accidentally, instead of a hundred K, he put, you know, 600 K and me being greedy, just uh, accept, 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 uh, right? And so he's then changed 600K to 600 coins. And because I want to oh. scam him- You're just spamming- I'm just spamming accept, accept, accept. accept. <laughs> and then when I look at my bank, I only have 600 <laughs> coins. And then before you know it, he's logged off, blocked, and never see him again. It's all over. And then, but the thing is when I was a scammer and I did the scams, I remember like, I wouldn't even block and log off. Like I would, um, I basically told this guy, there was this like, I think lanterns were like a big thing in the game and they were worth like millions of coins. These party hats? These yeah, party hats and lanterns and stuff like that. So, and then there was like to make a lantern, you, well, I don't know how you make a lantern, but I told this guy that you can make a lantern with the item elemental fire okay. and um, regular lantern. Okay. And I was like, you just combine the two. And it makes- I believe that. It makes it sounds the, the legit, lantern yeah. worth like millions, right? And I was like, look, I'm quitting the game. Like, I, you know, it's all over for me. Here, <laughs> have it for 500K. And he was like, oh, that's a bargain. I'll give you 500K for it. So he gave me 500K. I took it, transaction went through. And then he realizes that actually when you combine the two, nothing happens. You can't make a, a lantern. And then, mate, he, I think you can follow people. You can yeah, yeah, right yeah. click, click, yeah. follow. They follow you automatically. <laughs> so, he just- so he kept following me for like two hours and just kept typing like, please, sir, can I have my stuff back? Like, I would love it back. Like, this is all I have. Try to guilt trip me, but me, I, I'm uh, walking on 500k richer. Mate. Yeah. yeah, mate, bring the conga line. Let's <laughs> <Yeah>. all go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyways, we're, we're well off. Well, well, making a big tangent. Ro and, and I got some RuneScape cockatoos. Rohan gets a few cockatoos. I don't know what I can do back. It's a shame, really. Alrighty, fellas, that brings us to the end of an episode. I have changed clothes. I've moved seat. I have lost all my friends, but. That's neither here nor there. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode that we use, you know, the space a bit better with the game. Uh, If you've got any segment recommendations that we got uh, to use this new space, let us know. Let us know if you miss Kush. Kush, last minute uh, didn't come, but next week, hopefully we'll have him back. If you want to see the rest of our episodes, check them out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, any of your favorite podcast apps. Check us out on the Instagram. Check us out on the Reels. Check us out on the TikTok at Critical Banter. You know where we are. With all that, we'll see you guys next week.